Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So this is my first video in over five months. I took a five-month break due to what is going on with all the COVID stuff. And I had to shut my website down for a while due to expenses and so on. But anyway, this morning I came across a video by the artist. His name is Jay Gordon. And I posted... This video, it's an 11-minute video on how the artist can use the harmonic armature. I thought it was really interesting and a great video to de to demonstrate how the artist can use the harmonic armature very easily when it comes to composition. Unfortunately, right now, there is so much information online about dynamic symmetry that a lot of artists and photographers are confused because it's just so overwhelming. I generally teach the harmonic armature. Now, I do have a lot of information on my website about dynamic symmetry because I've studied it for over 10 years, but I'm leaning more into the harmonic armature because it's definitely much easier to learn. The information out there that I found seems to be validated, and that's that's a problem with the dynamic symmetry arena. At least 90% of that information out there is not validated. And the other reason I, I teach it is, it, it, like I said, it's just easier to learn. It's it's just uh, it's a one grid approach. Okay, you don't need you know twenty five different size root rectangles to create designs and then overlap them and then it just goes on forever. This is a one grid approach. And what I liked about the video was that he made a good point that once you've drawn it a few times, it doesn't matter the size of the canvas you're using. You're always drawing the same 14 lines. The 14 line grit is the harmonic armature. It's one and the same. So once you've drawn it a few times, it's in your head. You don't have to think about it. And you can use any size canvas or sketch pad. It doesn't matter. What that does, because you're constantly repeating the same 14 lines and you have an infinite amount of variety within those lines, the rate of learning is much quicker. But what I did was I downloaded a few of the images he has on his website and I'm gonna point out a few things the first image is a photograph of a statue of a horse and what he did was he laid the 14 line grid on top of it to get an idea of where to place your subject because that's really what this is about right composition is how to divide your frame and where to place your subjects so it's visually pleasing and with the harmonic armature you can do that very easily and let me demonstrate that for you today all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight a few things when it comes to this to this grid. So let me, I'm going to highlight them in yellow. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay lines on the grid itself. And as you can see, what the artist is doing, they're, they're, they're placing the subject within the armature and it's locking it in place. It's using some of the diagonal lines, for example, here. The diagonal line I just did, it follows the back and this area here of the horse, right? And then you have the center line, which is the center of the square, and it's under the underbelly of the horse. You have this diagonal line being played out in this angle here. You have a division here. Wherever you have two or more lines intersect, you can drop a vertical horizontal. You have another one here locking the head into place, right? You have a division here, which locks in the tail end here. But you also have the use of the diagonal line right here, in this area here. You have a horizontal line here, again, where two or more diagonal lines intersect. You can drop a horizontal or vertical line. And if I drop one here where these lines intersect, it gives me the top of that, the mount where the horse is standing. You got another one right here where these diagonal lines intersect. And then if I drop a vertical right where these two diagonal lines intersect, it intersects this diagonal line right here, and it gives me another horizontal line. So with a few extra lines, the artist is locking their subject into place. He's using the diagonal lines. You have this diagonal line being played out here, right? And you don't have to go crazy with this stuff. What you're doing is you're locking your subject into place you can use the diagonal lines, horizontal and vertical, to find a pleasing location on your canvas. And then what the artist does in the video, he then draws it out. And let me show you what that looks like. And here's his final drawing. He's using the armature. You have these diagonal lines, like I said, here. He's framing it in. 
this diagonal line here. And I'm not going to draw every single line again, but you get the point. Got the underbelly here. So what he did was he drew the horse after he plotted it out using the photograph. And then he fit it within the armature so that when you remove the armature, now it's placed on the canvas so that it's pleasing to the eye. The idea of composition is you want to place your subjects and divide your frame so that it's pleasing visually. It's called design. It, it, it's, it's what makes a work of art a work of art. There's a lot of things that go into art, but without a good design, it, it can't be art. Design is the foundation of art. It's the foundation of all art. Whether you're doing photography, drawing, or painting, it doesn't matter. Sculpture, it doesn't matter. And you have this vertical here being played out. This is how this works. You don't need a thousand lines. I was looking at some of the dynamic symmetry analysis you can find online. All you got to do is type in dynamic symmetry and see what's out there. I was looking at a self-published book this morning. There, there's a diagram in there where the, the author is dropping down 3,000, over 3,000 lines on a, on a painting to describe what's going on. And you can't do that. You don't need 3,000 lines. Matter of fact, I was uh, analyzing a Vermeer the other day. It had 28 lines that, that clearly describes what is going on in the composition. You don't need to drop down thousands of lines. In fact, the more lines you drop down, the less credible it is. And that's the problem I have with the dynamic symmetry arena. It's just this this mixed bag of information with just hundreds and thousands of lines dropped down on whether it's a painting, a drawing, or a photograph, it doesn't matter. Everybody in the dynamic symmetry arena seems to do the same thing. So it's really, really confusing. This is why I like the harmonic armature. I just think it's much easier to learn. All right, so Jay Gordon also had this image on his website. And you can download these. He has online information, which is great, by the way. And I do have, I linked his website to mine under resources, under websites, because I thought it was that good. But again, he's doing the same thing here. Let me just draw this out and highlight a few things. He's locking the tail in here. You've got the underbelly right here. And you can play with this as an artist. You can move your subject around the grid to find the most pleasing location using whatever lines you want. Whatever effect you're going for, you have this diagonal line being played out right here, right? You have this being framed in with these two diagonal lines. I can drop that horizontal and drop it down. You've got the, the eye looking straight down. That's with that vertical. You have this diagonal line being played out right here. It's supporting the back side. I assume this is a dog. You have this diagonal line being used. In other words, you don't have to use every single line in the grid. That, that's not the point. The point is you want to use certain lines and you can use as few or many as you want. As Charles Boulot says in the book The Painter's Secret Geometry, the artist will more or less use the harmonic armature to however, however they, they feel you know, it's needed for the art they're doing. The armature just gives the artist a starting point for placement of their objects and, and how they're going to divide their frame. That's what this is all about. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't take years to learn this information. You should be able to learn it very quickly and apply it just as easily. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.